Ciao, I'm Mario, a Swiss car guy on YouTube, and today I'm driving a 2008 Lexus LS600H. You've probably read the title, which says something along the lines of I am running out of money or something like this, so ooh, I have no money. Um, it's actually not that bad and it's also something I will not go into this video why I've sort of run out of money but if you are so inclined you can speculate about it down in the comments I will reveal it in the next video most likely but what I want to do I do a little catch-up in this video and I don't mean the thing condiment you put onto your fries. No, no, I mean, uh, I haven't put out a lot of videos recently. I wanna go over why that is and, um, uh, you know, get you up to speed on what has happened recently. So you might wonder why, Mario, why did you not put out a lot of videos? Well, first off, uh, I wasn't feeling like doing it. The good thing when you are not a full-time YouTuber, especially if you're a very small YouTuber, you basically have no pressure to put out videos. And this is a hobby for me, so I like to put out a video when I like to put out a video. And in recent times, I have not really liked it. And the reason is obviously not you, the viewers, but uh, um, a combination of things. And it started with the radio and 360 degree camera install on my Porsche Cayman S because that took forever. I mean, I mentioned in the video, it took me like 30 hours or something like this to, to install it start to finish. And uh, once I was done with that, I was like, oh, finally I'm done. And uh, I, I wasn't really feeling like starting any other projects or finishing up other projects or doing any other things really. So once I was done with that, I was kind of happy and I was, it was about time to take a break, even though I didn't release a lot of videos on that because it took me so long. I released like a total of two or three videos, but uh, it took me months to do that. So that's one thing. And the other thing is also this year I turned 40 which doesn't sound like a lot. And I always thought turning 40 is like just another birthday, who cares? And it turned out it's a bit more than just that because almost as soon as I turned 40, health issues started. Nothing bad, really. I have one issue that still persists, but it's more of an annoyance than an issue, unless, unless it's cancer, but I don't know that. But let's say it's just an annoyance, and I'm the kind of person, when I'm not 100% healthy and ready, I won't do anything. I go into hibernation mode. So this was something that didn't help. Uh, incidentally, the very moment I turned 40, I started having like massive back pain. And um, this has finally gone, I hope, for a long time. But it was quite crippling. I mean, I still continued working, I continued doing everything, but also while being in pain. And this is something that, hmm, while I am in pain, I don't like to, to be very active. So I didn't do a lot of things. I didn't work on the cars and I didn't make any videos. But now the back pain is gone and I should be starting again, I think. Another thing that happened when I became 40, um, uh, on the way back from my birthday party, because my family was so nice to organize a, a birthday party for me in my hometown of Arbonne. And so the evening after I was driving home with my sister in the car because I was going to drop her off at her place, which is along my way home. So um, we were driving back. It was, I reckon, around 12.30 at night. And um, we were on the motorway and then my sister, you know, she started complaining like, wow, this is a really bad piece of road. And I had to counter quite quickly with, no, nah, the road is fine, the car isn't. We were driving the Lexus and, um, and the car was getting very stiff and very, you know, jumpy over the road. I knew what that meant because I have experienced it before. It's a collapsing air suspension, which means the car was riding on the bump stops. So I slowed down considerably and drove uh, to the next exit, to the next um, um, service station. I got out and then I found that the car had gone down in the rear. The front was fine. Actually, the front was even a bit too high because the rear was sagging and then mm, the front went even higher. 
but I checked it and I saw that in the rear, even though I am on the bump stops, I have enough clearance. So to drive the car uncomfortably, but drive it, and the front had easy enough clearance to steer and everything. So I decided to go on. So the car did not leave me stranded. I just drove slowly, which is like 80 kilometers per hour. Um, dropped my sister off at home and then drove the way home to my place. And um, yeah, the next day, or I think the day after, because it was a weekend, uh, I brought the car to a Toyota dealership because first I thought, well, you know, air suspension, things could be complicated. Let's bring it to the dealership. They know how to handle it. And the other thing is a new dealership had just opened like half a kilometer from where I live. So I could basically drop off the car and then walk back. And indeed they knew um, what was wrong with the car. In fact, uh, the, the service manager said, well, I'm not even going to attach a computer because I know where, where these things go wrong. And uh, he diagnosed it very, very quickly. It was the rear height sensors that had basically broken. They had gone solid. They wouldn't move at all. And um, he first offered to rig it up so that the car would stay up. But then uh, he said the, the sensor were so stiff and wouldn't move at all that it wouldn't work. So they ordered the sensors and they were a factory order, which means it would take weeks. And it was February, so um, this is the only car I have that has winter tires. Fortunately, it was one of the warmest Februarys ever, so I have been driving my Cayman S the whole time. Begrudgingly, because I know I'm one of the few persons who complains about driving a Porsche, but uh, I mostly drive in this situation, which is um, Zurich stop and go traffic, and a manual Porsche is just not great in that. And, you know, it's great on the open road, but not in the city. So I was hoping that the car would be fixed quite um, soon, but the parts had to be ordered from Japan. And uh, obviously they didn't overnight them because this is not the Fast and Furious. No, they uh, shipped them by barge apparently. So it took exactly one month for the parts to arrive. And once they arrived, they installed them quickly and I got the car back. But I was without the Lexus, my reliable Lexus for a month. But then again, this is what you get with air suspension. Air suspension is always going to go wrong at some point. Um, when it happened, I was quite sure it wasn't the rear shocks because those had been replaced before I bought the car. So they are only like six years old and um, air, sh air struts should not fail that quickly. So I, I, I thought I knew it was something else and it was the sensors which are considerably cheaper. But since I went to the dealership and I bought, you know, dealership prices and everything, uh, the whole job with installation cost me, I believe, 1,800 francs, which on the whole is not that much, but then again, it's money I'd rather not have spent. Which also goes to tell me that height sensors on these cars may be uh, wear items, something that you should replace um, as a preventative maintenance. Because if I were to shop around, if I had ordered the parts on Megazip or um, Partsook or one of those uh, big parts, I was on my Yama for that matter, I think I would have bought a single sensor for like 300 bucks. And in this case, I spent like more. It was over 600 or 700 for one sensor. And this is why it added up so much. Then of course the work to replace them. But I think this is a, an item that should be replaced in advance because I was lucky with the rear ones because that way the car remained steerable. I could still drive it. If it was the front one, I would have been screwed because I wouldn't have been able to drive the car because the wheels would have touched the wheel arches. So I, I yeah, I would have been stranded, but I was lucky in an unlucky situation and the Lexus is back and so far it's been pretty okay. Pretty okay, except for the battery. And I don't mean the hybrid battery, I mean the 12 volt battery. Because um, I have been driving the Porsche quite a lot and um, 
when I went to pick up the Lexus after it had, you know, been parked for two weeks or something, uh, it wouldn't start. And not only would it not start, but the instrument cluster would illuminate and give you the the weirdest um, error codes like um, brake failure, visit workshop immediately and stuff like that. And then, um, yes, I'm, I'm used to this. So to me, it was quite obvious that the battery was empty. So I always have the jumper pack, I jump the battery, and as soon as I connected the jumper pack, the light in the trunk turned on, which it didn't before, and then the car would start and have no errors whatsoever. I had this happen twice, and then I, um, I actually charged the battery using my, my big 40 amp uh, charger, and ever since it's been okay. But then again, I haven't I haven't had it standing around for a lot. I've driven the Trans Am and stuff recently, but the car, I, didn't, I don't think it has been parked for more than a week. So let's see how it goes. I did test my battery with my battery conductance meter and it tested fine. So I guess a good charge and then it should be all right. Because if this problem persists, either the battery is really defective and my tester didn't show it, or, and this is a bit worse, my uh, DC to C, DC to DC charger, the one that charges the 12 volt battery from the hybrid system, has a problem, which I wouldn't want because that sounds expensive. Yes, but I've been driven the Trans M because um, mostly is because I went to the Arbon Classics a couple of weeks ago. That's a rather nice. Um, biannual event in Auburn, my hometown, where um, there's a big meet of classic cars, there's air shows like the Air Museum in Altenrhein, they do like air shows with double-decker planes and stuff like that, there is the Patrouille Suisse with the jet planes making acrobatics and uh, the PC-7 which is the like the drive, it's like from the Swiss military, the training airplane, plane, the Pilatus PC-7, which is a Swiss airplane. They do all kind of fancy acrobatics. And there was even a the Super Puma display team where they have a Super Puma military helicopter, which apparently can do loopings. And they displayed and the, 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 it was amazing. And obviously I had to take my cars there. So I took the Cadillac and I took the Trans Am. Cadillac was easy to take there because it was parked there for a while because um, yeah, it's my mom's place and, and there there is a free garage spot and the Trans Am I drove it over from uh, from my place in Zurich so um, I had two cars there and of course I needed a second driver to drive my Trans Am because I was driving the Cadillac so I needed somebody to bring the Trans Am and um, I had originally and originally my nephew, who's 18 years old, was supposed to drive the Trans Am, but since he couldn't be bothered to get up before noon, um, he was still in bed when it was time to leave. So I, I, my cousin jumped into the driver's seat, something he might have regretted, because the Trans Am uh, has been troublesome that day. The Cadillac has been perfect, and I really mean perfect, the Trans Am not so much. The Cadillac, uh, I have a lot of problem with it losing coolant and um, in the weeks coming up to the Arbon Classics I wanted to make sure that the car is sort of drivable so I actually drove it, I checked for leaks, I found out places where the car actually was leaking and then I realized there was a big big leak coming from the hoses going to the heat exchanger for the heating. So I undid those, I cleaned them up, I fastened the Jubilee clips again, and um, this seems to have solved most of the issues. There was also the flange on the timing cover that uh, was leaking quite a lot, and um, I JB welded that. It, it was a long shot from the beginning, and it didn't completely seal it up. There's still a little crack remaining, but I think it's losing a lot less coolant now. And um, um, in the two days uh, that I, I used the car on the Arbon Classics, which is mostly basically stop and go traffic, because from my mom's place to the lake where the event is, that was like, I would say three kilometers, maybe four, but especially on Sunday, there was a lot of traffic and it took me like 40 minutes to get there. So the car was actually idling a lot, standing in traffic and uh, according to the instrument getting hot, but I'm pretty sure my center is defective and I need to replace that. 
but all in all the Cadillac as far as I can see has behaved perfectly I even checked it didn't lose any coolant as far as I can see so um, I know it's not going to last but I, I'll take it and um, I will reward the car for that so the car will get some work done on it by me uh, in the hopefully near future but right now I am uh, I am happy with the Cadillac it did good uh, the Trans Am not so much because if you uh, watch my videos I did a video on everything that is wrong with the Trans Am and um, one thing I mentioned there is the car sometimes doesn't start especially when it gets hot inside and um, on the Arbon Classics where the car has been standing outside for, uh, for a long time this happened so at the time we were uh, supposed to leave um, the Trans Am wouldn't start and uh, my cousin was driving and um, he attempted it didn't really like it so I figured the reason why the car doesn't start is the um, the engine starter relay because as a part of the VATS uh, anti-theft system the car has a relay that has to enable the starter so if you use the right key then the relay gets enabled and sometimes when the car doesn't start the relay will make noise so I figured the relay is defective so I started on the field I took out the, the kick panel I unearthed the relay and then I bridged it with a wire because I had a bit of cable actually already prepared because I know uh, I knew that sometimes I would have to replace or bridge the relay so I did it and then most likely by accident the car would start because as I found out later it wasn't the relay the relay is fine because I tested it and everything it's fine the relay works the car has another issue. In fact, I reckon the car has an issue with either the wiring from the ignition switch or the ignition switch itself, the electronic contact, because uh, I'm driving in a tunnel now. I'm coming out of the tunnel now. Because the car has adjustable steering, so it has an adjustable steering rack which you can put up and down and when it's in the up position the car almost never starts but when it's in the down position the car mostly starts and my cousin he was always starting it with the, uh, with the steering wheel in the up position and I by habit I always put it down first and started then so um, yeah anyway the car started I went ahead in Cadillac, my cousin followed me in the, in the Pontiac amongst the crowds of people and then uh, at some point I was watching in the Rio Mirror and then I didn't see the Pontiac anymore so I, I stopped and then I got a phone call <laughs> telling me hey the car stalled while driving so uh, okay I parked the car I had my, my niece and, uh, and a friend of hers in the car um, they just went to go ice cream because I parked it right in front of an ice cream booth where there was no line so they could get ice cream quickly and I walked back to the Trans Am to find out why it wouldn't start so um, I reckon that the, the, the cable I used to bridge the relay um, one of the wires must have shorted against ground or something and shut off the car and then when it was time to start it again my cousin couldn't start it because the steering wheel was not in the right position so I went back in I got in the car put the steering wheel in the right uh, position tried a few times and the car started so we got back into the car drove to the Cadillac and then drove home and uh, yes this is an issue I have to fix with the Trans Am so uh, when I have time I will have to basically undo the, the steering cowl and things and then uh, really um, look at the cables uh, try and find out what it is maybe it's a gr ground problem or something like that but um, yeah that makes the car slightly unreliable especially since this is a car I, um, I daily drive and the, the fact that the car turned off must have been because of my, my bulge wire because uh, I then drove the car home to Zurich like one and a half hours and it was fine, it was perfectly alright so um, yeah, that is an issue I have to fix with the Trans Am but even my Cayman, my latest car, my 2008 Cayman S has not been flawless 
And uh, the first thing is, when I went to pick it up, when my Lexus was down, I had to take a bus to drive to its parking place because that's in Talwil and I live in uh, Langnau, so I had to take a bus to go there. Fantastic. And um, when I arrived there, my car in the garage is parked like in a spot where once you enter the garage, you can see it straight away because it's it's like a it's like a, a very exposed parking space. It's actually a very nice parking space. But immediately I noticed that hmm, the rear left tire seems low. So I walked to the car and found out that the rear left tire was basically completely deflated. I then connected my rather cheap and rather bad mobile tire inflator to find out the car was really completely, the tire was completely empty. So my mobile tire inflator is not very powerful, it's not very good, but it managed to get like, I think almost one bar of pressure into the tire, which is not what it needs because it needs like 2.5 or 2.6, but it was enough that I could drive the car to the next filling station to, to you know, fill it properly with using a compressor. So I did that, I filled it up, and then, since I had to daily drive the car, I always kept an eye on it, and it would always lose air. It would always lose air, and uh, I would always go to filling stations and, and pump it back up, and um, yeah, that was not really great. And I found out, no, I found out, I didn't really found out, but I speculated that, well, it's either I got a screw or something in the tire, which I tried to look for one, but I didn't, so I reckon the tires is probably fine. Um, so I reckon it must be the valve inside uh, the valve stem, yeah, the valve, uh, probably a leaky valve. Fortunately, I had a set of, um, you know, replacement valves and uh, uh, one of these valve screwdrivers because I bought a set on AliExpress once in case I ever needed it. So I replaced the valve and uh, that didn't fix the issue. Mm -hmm. So then again, I replaced it once more because I figured, ah, these are from AliExpress, maybe these are not good. And this, I had never replaced the valve, to be honest. So once I replaced the valve again, I realized that it was making hissing noises. So I hadn't fastened it enough. So I took the little screwdriver and fastened it a bit more, and then the hissing noises stopped. And ever since, it seems like it's holding air. That's been like a month ago. So I seem to maybe have dodged a bullet there because buying new tires is not something I want to do now because as you might have noticed from the title of this video, I am sort of strapped for cash right now. Also, I want to make sure I may be strapped for cash, but please, I'm not asking for money, so don't donate or do anything like this, absolutely not. I, I, I'm still in a good financial situation, don't worry, I, I own four cars. Nobody who owns four cars is, is poor, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, but the Cayman, so the tire is hopefully fixed, but the car has another issue. and. Yeah, that issue might be a bit more important because now that it's getting warmer, even though it has rained like for the last two weeks, now that it's getting warmer, I seem to notice that the air conditioning isn't working. Yeah. That's why you don't buy cars when it's cold because you cannot really test out the air conditioning. And I reckon the air conditioning is not working on the Cayman. And um, I'm hoping it's just a, a matter of filling it up because um, it doesn't give any errors. The compressor, the, the, the light on the, the AC unit, it still lights up. Usually if it's, it's really broken, the compressor won't turn on and then the light will not uh, light up. So I hope it's just that. So I, I need to have the car serviced anyway, so I will have uh, an AC service done at the same time. But anyway, I think that's it for this little update video. I think I will do more regular videos in the future. You will, I think, shortly see a video of what's all about with the situation of my finances. 
and um, again speculate in the comments down below what you think is the reason and uh, be creative about it I mean really why not and um, this is I think all for this video thank you very much for watching uh, even though this is like a just a little recap and a little update me complaining about my life and being 40 and being old and falling apart but uh, yeah that's what I do you know this is not a serious auto channel this is basically just Mario ranting so um, if you enjoy this kind of stuff please subscribe to the channel and uh, again leave a like if you like the video and make sure to tune in on the next video where I will reveal the whole I have no money situation so thank you very much for watching and have a nice day bye